Shalom, friends. Welcome to today's episode of Makeup and Movies. My name is Jamie Fringe. I'm your host. We have a new background today. Do you love it? We have a fat back. We have VHS's. We have my password journal from when I was in like sixth grade. Again, welcome to Makeup and Movies where uh, I do my makeup and talk about a movie that I really like or hate and uh, we have an okay time. What is this? A peppermint cookie lip mask? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's so gooey. Okay, that's... A lot. So today is going to be the first of many episodes that we will be categorizing as the Freddie Prince Jr. episodes. Actually, you know, I guess we could keep them on like a first name basis and just call them the Freddie episodes, the Frepisodes. Frepisodes, yes. Keeping it simple, you know? You know, Freddie Prince was just an absolute 90s icon, heartthrob, winner of so many Teen Choice Awards. He was a huge part of my life. All of his, not all of them, but so many of his movies are bad. Good, bad, you know what I mean? No offense, FP. I don't know, I think he strikes a chord with a lot of us in our 30s, and I thought it would be fun to just review a bunch of his movies. So for, for episode one, we're kicking it back to 1999 with the ever so classic She's All That. Starring Rachel Lee Cook, who I'm pretty sure didn't do any other movies besides like Josie and the Pussycats. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But will be appearing in the sequel of this movie coming out soon alongside a TikTok star. That's fun. Oops, I forgot I wanted to try the Wayne Goss foundation brush. So friends, oddly enough, uh, I had never seen this particular FPJ movie all the way through, but the movie was just kind of always there. You know, it played at every sleepover, every just little hangout, and then later in life on cable when I would wake up on my couch at 2 a.m. and be like, Freddie Prince? Oh, this is pokey. I have sensitive skin. I'm gonna go back to my sponge. So anyway, you can imagine how amused I was when I actually ended up recognizing a lot of the scenes, not because I had seen them in the movie, but because I saw them being made fun of in Not Another Teen Movie starring Chris Evans, which I was much more familiar with as a teenager. I watched more of the satire movies than I did the actual like 90s teen movies, I think, you know, like Scary Movie and all that. And I'm gonna try really hard not to be inspired by Not Another Teen Movie today. When I review this, I'm gonna try not to steal any of the jokes. Uh, it's gonna be pretty hard because this movie is pretty bad, full of cliches, full of the 90s teen tropes. Learned that word recently. Tons of themes that didn't age well, you know, tons of misogyny. It really has it all. Also, I almost forgot to say this. I wasn't even really looking at who directed it. I just happened to catch it when I was like watching the opening credits. It's directed by Robert Hiscove, <laughs> who I had never heard of until seeing from Justin to Kelly. So if it's directed by the likes of Robert Iscove, we know it's gonna be good. <laughs> Meaning bad. I need to add a little smudge of liner. So friends, when we... <gasps> I forgot I wanted to try and film in 4K today. I forgot to adjust my can. I guess I still can. Also forgot to put my press-ons on. Also forgot to change my shirt because I think I wore this in the last video. <laughs> all right, I will be right back. And when we come back, we're ripping on She's All That. We're back with that cream paint palette from Amazon. I found a way to make it stay and not be so creasy. Inglot Duraline, best product ever. <laughs> okay, drop will do ya. All right, kids, so the movie opens with this girl, Lainey, who's cool and deep and she's a painter. She's painting a deep painting and then spits a loogie into her brother's orange juice, which I felt like they spent way too much time focusing on for my personal preference. And I had to look away immediately right off the bat. I don't do spit. And then we cut to a shot of the school where we hear a familiar voice in the background saying something weird like, yeah, 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 earthquakes. Yeah, 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 earthquakes. Do you guys remember who it is? I bet you don't. Anyway, Lainey pulls up to school. Her dad drops her off. He calls her pumpkin nose. Have a good day, pumpkin nose. Can't I've ever heard that nickname, but I couldn't help but laugh because does anybody remember what the dad in Not Another Teen Movie calls his daughter? 
I'm not going to say it. Lainey heads into school. We meet her bestie. I think his name's Jesse. I don't know. It's the guy from the butterfly effect, and she's super mean to him. What happened to dropping 10 pounds before graduation? I'm looking into Jessie it. Just full on body shaming. And then we cut over to our main man, our main squeeze, Freddie Prince Jr. He plays a character named Zach. Also, Paul Walker's there, whom I had no idea was in this movie. And then one of my personal faves, Gabrielle Union, who I was really hoping was gonna have a bigger role in this movie but it turns out this was her first film ever like her debut as an actress so she's just has like a cameo and also please don't ask me how I didn't realize this but this girl I kept thinking she looked super familiar the whole time I was editing this and now I'm realizing that that's Lil Kim so star-studded cast so up walks Zach's girlfriend Taylor who has diet coke mouth oh my gosh I've got total diet coke mouth same and unfortunately, Taylor just dumps Zach, like, right in front of all his friends. Ooh. And naturally, Zach wants to know why, as would anybody. So she starts to tell him a story about Sprung Brock and how she was at this spring break beach party. She met someone else. But what's so weird about this, this is a very unique scene. It was a unique way to do a flashback. It was creative. Taylor and Zach are in the flashback, but I thought it was weird. There was no cool like editing effects or anything to make you know that it was a flashback. So if you had looked away from your screen for two seconds, which inevitably you probably would have by this point, you don't really know what's happening. Thankfully, I am here to tell you. Anywho, in the flashback, Taylor is dancing. She falls on this guy. Whom I only know is the crazy guy from Scream. His character's name is Brock. Personally, I thought it was a horrible choice. I think FP is a little bit cuter, seems like a little bit more of a gentleman, but this guy, Brock, he was on the real world. So Taylor obviously has chosen Brock. Zach obviously recognizes him because he's like a celebrity. The dyslexic volleyball guy? Okay, that was... A little harsh. Meanwhile, Lainey is painting an art class and these meanie girls come up and they take their insult pretty far and they suggest that she kill herself. It might be a good idea for you if um, you killed yourself. Think about it. Relax, minor teenagers. I don't know, I thought they uh, took it a little too far. It was a little too harsh for me personally. If I had directed the scene, I think it would have gone a little bit better like this. Lainey? Did you draw a butt on my Trapper Keeper again? Because that is not cool. Mm -mm. Do you know where that Trapper Keeper is from? It's from Venice. That's in Spain? No, it's not. We've, we've been through this. Anyway, listen, draw a butt on my Trapper Keeper again. I will tell everybody that Danny DeVito is your dad. And on that note, let's take a short break. And when we come back, oh sure, see you there. We're back with this liquid shimmery eyeshadow from Pop Beauty. So back at school, we finally get to see Usher. If you haven't put it together yet, he was the announcer from earlier. This was a pleasant surprise for me. I had no memory of Usher being in this movie, probably because I never saw the whole thing. Anyway, Usher's like the school announcer guy, and he's literally sitting there announcing that Zach got dumped. My condolences go out to a certain individual who got dissed. That's when you know kids are popular. They're so popular that the faculty allows the kid who does the morning announcements to talk about their love lives. So realistic. Anywho, Taylor's new boyfriend, Brock, the real world guy, he shows up, and Zach, it really just bums Zach out, understandably, you know? He kind of starts talking with his friends about how replaceable Taylor is. I have 2,000 girls in this school and I could bump with every one of them. By the way, guys, Paul Walker's there in this scene whom I love. His character's name is Dean. He's super annoying. <laughs> and long story long, he and their other friend Preston end up making a bet with Zach who claims that he can turn any girl into the prom queen within six weeks. The only catch is that Dean gets to pick the girl. I'll pick the girl. That's right, friends. That is the misogyny of 90s tween movies. Can't have Taylor, Zach? No biggie, just find a different body to fill your popular girl mold. <laughs> so they start browsing for chicks, perusing their options. This girl's picking a wedgie. Finally, they settle with Lainey Boggs because she has glasses and overalls. She's got glasses and a ponytail. Oh, look. I'm gonna try not to steal any of the jokes. I love how <laughs> I love how this was supposed to be difficult. This is supposedly the girl that will be most difficult to turn into the prom queen and she's clearly 
adorably, stunningly attractive and smart and out of Zack's league in every way, intellectually, emotionally, all of it. And then they even just start blatantly body shaming other women. Fat I can handle. Weird boobs, but not glasses. So then they kind of randomly cut to a clip of Brock during his time on the real world. They just kind of sprinkle these throughout the movie and Brock really, really likes to watch himself. Anyway, the only funny thing about this part was that Brock farted. No! And you guys know fart jokes are like my thing. I'm just really mature, you know? Are they even remotely close? You know what? I don't care. I don't care. I'm gonna try this Tarte Man Eater Mascara. Mm. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of a fun wand. So back at Shay Zach, we find out Zach's horrible secret. Are you ready for this, guys? It's... It turns out that Zach actually got accepted to too many Ivy League schools. <gasps> so stressful, right? He's like, oh God, what am I gonna do? I don't know if I should tell my dad I'm going to Harvard or Dartmouth. What am I gonna do? See how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Anywho, we meet Zach's sister, who is played by Anna Paquin. She gives him some advice. She's like, look, if you want to win over Lainey, you got to put in some effort. Weird, I know. So he takes her advice. He shows up at Lainey's work where she's wearing a nerdy taco hat. He really wants to talk to her, but she's just like trying to serve a customer. Super size, my ball. Look how cute this is. Ready? Anyway, he ends up asking her out. She kind of says no at first. Actually, she ignores him at first, but then her friend, you know, the one that she like called fat earlier, he is weirdly on board with it, tells her to do it, even suggests where they should go for the evening on their date. The show at the Jester, you can have my ticket. That's great. So Lainey's like, all right, fine. They make a plan to meet at this art expo thing that she's performing in. And let me tell you, this is my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> Look, guys, I'm not here to make fun of anyone's art, okay? Art is subjective, kind of. Uh, but this, this was just a little uncomfortable. <laughs> oh! FP is obviously soups weirded out. He doesn't even know when to clap. Hmm? I can't really blame him for not really knowing how to behave as an audience member. I probably would have been out there acting like this. Oh, you ready for a great show? I'm so excited. There's lots of bullshit happening. My soul is an island. My car is a Ford. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's fine. You know, little little facts about her. I want to be like Mike. Who's Mike? Who's Mike? Hey, who's Mike? I wasn't still or silent, but okay. Let's take a break, guys. I I gotta blend out this eyeshadow and we will be back with the rest of this truly heinous scene. We're back with ColourPop Ladybird. <sighs> All right, guys, if you thought this scene was awkward, just wait, it gets even worse. They end up forcing Zach to get on stage. What just happened? They force Zach to come up on stage and they don't really tell him what to do. He just knows he has to perform. <laughs> He has to do something artistic. He has to compete with what they're doing. <laughs> so he does what anybody would do and whips out his hacky sack. It's a hacky sack. He ends up just playing with his hacky sack and like improvising a slam poem while doing it. It's pretty good. Hack e sack. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? It's deep, you guys. You can tell his slam poem is based on his real life and how he's so tortured with everybody's expectations of him. Everyone's counting on you, Zach. Personally, I was feeling it. Long story short, he kills it. Lainey is soups impressed. He's actually pretty impressed with himself. They're walking back to Zach's car and uh, Zach tells her that her eyes are really beautiful so she should get some contacts. You ever think about contacts? Again, you guys, glasses are just a deal breaker in this movie. Anyway, Lainey gets ticked, she runs huh? off. And the next day, he really wants to try to make up for it. So he shows up at her house. Her brother's there. Her brother's played by Kieran Culkin, who I really like. He's super funny. He like thinks Zach is really cool. So naturally he gets nervous. He's really blowing it. Hey, you wanna play some Sega? Sega! 
Also, Lainey's hair extensions look really good. <laughs> he invites her to spend a day with him at the beach. They go to the beach. Zach is incredibly observant. Check out that water. Zach's friends show up, so he just kind of walks off and leaves her with the cool girls that she doesn't really know. Lainey ends up removing her overalls to reveal that she has a smoking hot bod, which we all could have predicted. I really liked Dean's response to this. Hey now, check out the bobos on Super Freak. Mm. I think that might be my new favorite sentence ever said in any movie. Check out the Bobos on Super Freak. That should be on a shirt. Anywho, they start a fun volleyball game where everyone's getting hit in the head for some reason. So Zach's friends end up inviting Lainey to a party over at Preston's. She says no because she has to clean her house or something. It kind of reminded me of the Lizzie McGuire movie when Paolo invited her somewhere and she was like, it's okay, I have cheese. <laughs> you remember that? I've been wanting to try this Sephora brand concealer for like two years ever since someone suggested it to me. It is the Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. What was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah, so Zach, uh, you know, he's not good at taking no for an answer, so again, he shows up at her house, but this time he shows up with the entire, like, soccer team, and he makes them clean her house, which is normal. And also, he brought her a dress, and he brought his sister, who's gonna give her a makeover. It's a tween movie, guys. We have to have a makeover scene. What did you expect? Well, the sister's idea of a makeover is slightly more dramatic than mine was in high school. When I would make my friends over, she straight up cuts her hair. And by cuts her hair, I mean like takes out the bad extensions that the costume people put in. Takes off the glasses. You're a whole different person if you take glasses off. We all know this. And she walks down the steps to Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Rich. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is a bop. That's one of the first songs I ever learned on the acoustic guitar. I wonder if I can still play it. Anyway, uh, it's a beautiful moment, you know, until Lainey, like, trips and falls because she has to be relatable. So they get to the party. Taylor and her boyfriend are there. Her boyfriend's kind of embarrassing her. She's not in a great mood. Ends up seeing Lainey, who really puts her over the edge. She ends up dumping her drink all over her, but you can't tell because the drink was the same color as Lainey's dress. Literally, you can't tell. They show like a full body shot of her later and it's not there. Unless, of course, they just edited it weird and forgot to put the stain on it. Anyway, she's obviously devastated. She runs off. Zach tries to comfort her. He gives her some very profound advice. Gives her his jacket. He's scoring some points with Lainey at this point. And you know what, guys? If you thought Taylor was upset here, just wait till the next day. We get to school, and it turns out Lainey has been nominated for prom queen. And there's already signs made. Literally that day. <laughs> Later on at Shay Laney's, Zach shows up again. Laney's in the basement painting, and I could not help but laugh here, guys, because this was the scene that I recognized, even though I had never seen it, because of the scene from Not Another Teen Movie. <laughs> How did you get in here? I deadbolted the door. There's a hole in the side of your house. <laughs> Genius. Pure genius. I'm so excited right now to try this cream bronzer from Fenty. <gasps> Whoa! Why did I choose this color? It's like not, it's not gonna work, but you know what? We're gonna try it. When in Rome. Anywho, we find out in this scene that Zach, he just, he doesn't want to do what his dad wants him to do. What he's really saying is pick my college, choose my future. It's literally gray on me. Okay. Dang it. I'll try this elf one instead. I ordered this with my Target order from Instacart the other night. I was like, coffee creamer, sparkling water, broccoli, elf cream contour palette. <laughs> anyway, guys, I don't mean to beat a dead horse here in regards to Zach's, you know, internal conflict about having too much pressure on him to be perfect all the time, but I just, I have to make fun of it because it's in literally every tween movie from the 90s, you know? Remember in Varsity? blues. I, I don't, don't want, want your, your laugh. Life. Also, Breakfast Club. I mean, that's not 90s, but still. You've got to be number one. Oh, so much better. Okay, wait, where was I? Anyway, amidst this whole conversation, Lainey wants to know why he came over, but he forgets. Why'd you really come here, Zach? 
I forget. Back at school the next day, and there's these two dudes rapping about who's gonna be prom queen. But who's about to be prom queen? Lee. I mean, honestly, you guys had nothing else to rap about. <laughs> it's one of my favorite uh, tropes. Is that what you would refer to as a trope? Just, you know, that thing in tween movies where every character's life revolves around the main character, and it's all anyone cares about or anyone talks about, and all the supporting actors will just go out of their way to help solve whatever conflict the main character is facing. At least these guys are decent rappers. Robert Isco finally chose some decent rappers. Oh, come on. Slenderize my bipod a little, would ya? You guys? Mm, where was I? All right, guys, we cut over to this cafeteria scene. My second favorite scene of this whole movie. Starts off weird. I was incredibly confused. Simon is like wheeling around the cafeteria offering people fresh cracked black pepper, which, you know, he's a teenage boy, whatever, that's not that weird. What I thought was weird was that he was wheeling because I didn't think those little shoes with wheels in them existed back then. Oh, I almost don't want to put powder on it, but on camera, it's looking a little textury. That concealer though, under the eye, magical. Where was I? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon, he's rolling around the cafeteria, offering people fresh black pepper. One of the people is Sarah Michelle Geller, which really, really, really confused me. Like, why did she have a literal one second role in this movie? Because she was already famous by then. Okay, I checked. I know what you did last summer came out in 97. I'm gonna have to Google that later, and if I forget, please enlighten us all in the comments. Anyway, these bully kids show up, and they put on Simon's pizza. Can I say p***s? Is that a bad word? Ear muffet kids, I'm sorry. And just when Simon's about to eat the pizza, the pizza, Zach shows up and he's like, hey, leave him alone. Grab the pizza. <laughs> Hoover it. <laughs> I'm not mature, I'm not mature enough to review this movie. When he said Hoover it, I really thought that he was gonna like have to. <laughs> But I was wrong. They just eat it. Anyway, Zach is very proud of himself. He thinks he just saved the day, but he looks over at Lainey and she's not feeling it. She's got that look on her face, you know, that look, that typical, why did you just make those guys eat that baby pizza look? Uber <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Grow up. I'm obsessed with this contour palette I got for the 2014 video. It's just little small bronzer. I don't like even calling it a contour palette. Anyway, after the Hoover scene, we cut over to Dean. He shows up at Lainey's work. These guys just will not leave her alone, I swear. I don't know what sort of wild hair he just got, but he decides to just like sabotage her little thing she's got going with Zach. Maybe we can go out sometime. Like the prom, maybe? He doesn't care about you like that. Think about the prom some more. And then he he tells her that they would have an okay time. We'd have an okay time, I think. Well, in that case, I wasn't really wanting her to go on a date with Dean, but if they're gonna have an okay time, she'd be crazy not to go. So back at school, Dean further sabotages things by just straight up ratting Zach out. He tells Lanny about the deal, about everything, even acts like he wasn't also in on it. This isn't cool anymore. Lanny is obviously devastated. She's like, am I a bet? My bet? My bet? No, Lainey. You're a tortured, brooding artist. <laughs> she ends up going home. She's brooding. Her dad, you know, kind of gives her some motivational speech about dentures. You're gonna wake up 85 years old sitting on a porch looking for your teeth. Thanks. Might sound weird, guys, but you know what? It's enough motivation to get her to go to prom with Dean. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Even after he made fun of her bobos, she shows up with him. So cut over to prom. Prom is incredibly intense, much more intense than mine was. Mine was lame in comparison. Look at this guy, he's just like dancing with a blow up doll. Usher's there, he's DJing. He doesn't really get to enjoy himself, not fair. Lainey's got this one dance move I really like. It just, you know, it looks like an okay time until it progresses from an okay time to a really good poppin' time when they all bust out into this miraculously choreographed dance. Robert Isco coming through with the choreographed dances. At least there was no bone breaking in this one. 
cut over to the men's bathroom where Dean is making bets. He's betting everybody that he can, you know, hook up with Lainey later that night. I hate Dean. He's just gross, you know? Not even the late, great Paul Walker and his beautiful face and velvety voice. None of that can redeem Dean from being a scumbag. Which I guess means he did a good job. Meanwhile, Jesse was in the bathroom stall the whole time and he overhears all of it, thankfully. So, Zach gets crowned as prom queen. <laughs> Prom king. Uh, the teacher like kisses him, which was weird. Taylor gets crowned as queen. Uh, she also kisses him, but he's not happy. He doesn't want all these people kissing him. He just wants a kiss from Lainey Boggs. So then Jesse runs up while Zach is like giving his <laughs> acceptance speech. I thought it was inappropriate timing, but he has to tell Zach about Dean's shady plan. But. <sighs> Wait a minute, Jesse. Okay, first of all, you ran and told Zach's sister. Then you ran right past Lainey to tell Zach while he was giving an acceptance speech. Why waste all the time when you could have just told Lainey yourself right then and there? You could have, you know, saved yourself an asthma attack. Man, can you hear me? I was. Tell him, okay. Anyway, Zach rushes off. He calls the hotel where he thinks Dean, you know, took Lainey. And they totally lead you to believe that there's gonna be like this huge dramatic fight scene where Zach busts into their hotel room and saves Lainey. I was. I was ready, I was prepared for like an intense scene, but none of that happens. They just like randomly cut back to Lainey's house. Oh yeah, and Zach's there, cause you know, he can't stop showing up at her house. <laughs> Did my light back there die? <sighs> Hold on. Hold on, I said. Anyway, it just annoyed the heck out of me that he just kept showing up at her house uninvited. Like call first, okay? You have phones. Learn about it. They go out by the pool. He gives Lainey, you know, the famous speech of, I made that bet before I knew you, Lainey, before I really knew me. This is so cliche. Come on. You could have done something a little more unique, like something like this. Hey, can you make those gross dad noises I like so much? Yeah. <laughs> those are great. Who taught you to do them? My best friend. Oh, what else did she teach you? She taught me a lot. Oh, well, could she maybe teach you how to brush your teeth? Because you still don't know how. I'm kind of liking the fact that I don't. <laughs> so. See you guys? Way better. Anyway, they're chatting. FP is just, you know, convincing Lainey to give him a second chance. Lainey says this. I feel just like Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. You know, except for that whole hooker thing. You know what, Lainey? You don't really have room to hate on hookers when you are a French twist to your senior prom. Okay. Also, I liked this part because we finally learned the terms of the bet. It was one of the first things I asked Nick when we were watching this the other night. At the beginning of the movie, I was like, wait, what were the terms of the bet? And Nick said, there was none. He was wrong. He cut over to graduation and we find out that because FP lost the bet, he has to accept his diploma at graduation naked. Which is just so realistic. <laughs> I'm sure nobody on the faculty would have noticed that he was sitting there in his seat waiting to get his diploma stark raven naked. And then guys, then, then, then the movie just ends. Oh. So there you have it guys, you know, amidst all of that misogyny, there was a glimmer of wokeness, if you will. You know, they at least kind of let the viewer know that it wasn't Lainey who needed to change, it was Zach. At least they tried, right? They tried, I guess, but I just couldn't get past the misogyny, you know? Body shaming, the boob sh the bobo shaming, Dean's entire character. Uh, all that stuff with Dean just feels extra gross to me now, given the very prominent role that Harvey Weinstein and his production company Miramax played in like producing this film. I'm gonna have to overlook it. <laughs> That's about it, you guys. The only other thing I really liked about this movie was the credits. They were very enlightening. I want my ears back on. I just don't like my hair tonight. Usher is referred to as the camp DJ, which makes sense now, but at the time I was like, oh, that's what he is because, you know, it seemed weird to me at first. I didn't know if he was a student or something else. I don't know. Also, the lead makeup artist's name was Felicity Bowring, which is pretty fitting because all of their makeup was very Bowring. <laughs> Just kidding. They all looked beautiful. So that's it, kids. That's that movie. She's not 
all that. So I did look up the film's budget and some reviews earlier, but of course I have to read them to you because for some of you, that's like your favorite part of this whole video. Box office budget for this movie was estimated at $10 million. Opening weekend in the USA, it grossed $16 million. It was number one at the box office. And the cumulative worldwide gross for this movie is $103,166,989 doll hairs. <laughs> No wonder we don't see FP anymore. He doesn't have to make any more movies. He was set for life after She's All That. <laughs> Must have been the Hoover scene. Hoover it. So that's it for me today, kids. Uh, I had a blast. Thank you for letting me do this. I have to tell you, I am on day six of my hardcore strict quarantine because I was exposed to COVID last week. Uh, I've been going a little crazy. So it was very wonderful to be able to do this for you, review this movie. I'm catching up. I'm watching bad movie after bad movie after bad movie. Rearrange my whole studio. Video, now I can do this. I don't think I could do that before. Maybe I could. I don't know. Thank you so much for being here, for watching, for hanging out with me and Freddie Prince Jr. and Penny. She's chasing her own tail back there. All you can see is her tail wagging. Okay. See you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye. Can you make those gross dad noises I like so much? Of course there's a car. Oh, dang it. I will try to fix you. Is that supposed to happen? I don't like that one. Can you go like this? Mmm. Way better than Flamin' Hot Cheetos. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hoover it. <laughs> anyway, after the pube hoovering. <laughs> so watch it. Who in their right mind would turn down an okay time? You guys know that. That's why you're here. <laughs> I gotta make that funnier. Are my lights like dying? Cause my face looks weird. Out on the bearded barley, a lively. Okay. Well, should have had him on that setting the whole time. I feel like I'm starting to get to that point where I need filler right there. Mmm. Mmm. Susan.